What's good? What's good, family? How are everybody doing tonight? IOBA. I'm TC. Okay, so today, I'm going to keep this short. Because, but, but it's important that I speak about this. See, I got, you know, I co- got what I like to call a little small, a little small, that's redundant. But I have a small business, right? And um, that's what IOBA is, Institute of Black Awareness, right? That's what I run my shit under. And the things that I do under that heading, I honor. I do, you know, several different things. One of which is I draw portraits and produce artwork for people, right? So, you know. And then I have a background in graphic art and graphic design, right? And, you know, along with, you know, portrait painting and drawing and that shit. In other words, and, oh, and, and I and I, um, I worked in a... In a um, a print shop for probably three years, and I was in uh, heavily involved in the manufacture of shipping cartons for 20 years, right? Corrugated box making. I worked at a corrugated box plant in the printing department sometimes, right? Saying all that to say I know how things are produced, how printouts are produced, and how you produce my certain, you know, certain pieces of merchandise. So, all that. I knew, So, when I walk in somebody's shop where they're producing T-shirts and things of that nature, I know what to look for as far as equipment. All right, now. So, my wife and I, we go to the flea market. We run into this brother's little T-shirt shop. And he's selling license plates with um, football logos and shit like that on it, right? He got people believing that he's making them right there, right? Because he got a he got a silk screen machine and he got a, a press machine uh, that used for, you know, mass producing T-shirts. But a lot of the equipment that I think he should have there, he doesn't have there. For the amount of, for the type of shit that he got on display, Claiming to have made it there. In other words, he got an internet connection somewhere where he produces the shit and they ship him what he need. I know all about those because I used to I used to have to use those kinds of companies when I had my drill team to order like five t-shirts this way and two t-shirts that way or one custom magnet for my doors. I used to order that shit all the time. So I walk in there, he don't think I know what I'm looking at, but I tell the guy... My wife and I, we tell the guy we want, a, we want a license plate made, or autism license plate made, right? So I know that there's a website you can go to where you can custom make your own license plate, one. But it takes a day or two for them to ship it to you once you make it. So that's where this guy is making this, this license plate at, but he wants us to believe that he is producing the thing right there and, you know, and all that, so takes me um, about an hour to do it, he says. That's the sales pitch. Takes you about an hour. I'm looking around. I'm saying, how the fuck this motherfucker going to make this thing in an hour? But I digress. You know, maybe he's got some other shit somewhere else. I don't know. I mean, back in the day, you used to could order, you could order um, your prints from the grocery store in an hour. So, you know, maybe he's got something like that around. I don't fucking know, but I know I don't see what I should be seeing in order for him to make this license plate, this custom license plate, in one hour. But we give him the benefit of the doubt. The guy wants a $20 deposit. So I said, okay, it's my fucking $20 deposit. So we give him a $20 deposit. Okay, so we would already paid for the thing two times because you can get him on Amazon for nine bucks. So we give him more than twice that. We give him twenty dollars. He said, "Come back in an hour." I go back in an hour. I go back in an hour. The thing ain't done. What did he say? Um, oh, he needed us to confirm that that's the design she wants, and they do that through text messaging. 
So I got a, I got all the text messages where she said, I like the design, go ahead and make it. My husband will be there to pick it up. And where he texted her back and said the thing was done. So I go back to the flea market because we left. I go back to the flea market to find out if it's done and pick up the license plate for $20 on delivery. So he wants $40 for the fucking thing that he paying $5 for or $9 if he's getting it from the same website I'm looking at. So he got a three... 350% markup. 350% markup on this one item. Right? And he fucking me over, telling me to wait and tell me. So right now, I don't know what he's thinking, but I'm thinking this. Motherfucker, I know, this is what I'm thinking. I know that I can order one of these things off the line for $5. I know that you ain't got the equipment here to make this fucking license plate right here, right now. I know that you got to go somewhere and either order it or have somebody else make it. That's why you're blowing me off and making me wait till tomorrow and telling me you're going to call me when it's done. But that to me is bad business. And that's the type of shit that niggas need to stop doing. Now, if I was white, he'd have told me I could have it for you in a day or two. But because I'm black, he think I'm stupid or something. Or he doesn't, doesn't like himself. He's talking about this and talking about that and talking about how badly the motherfucking owners of the flea market doing him. He can't even spread out his equipment and blah, 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 blah. While at the same time, he's doing the same thing to a black man trying to give him some business. Because that's all I'm trying to do, you know. I'm trying to get this black man some business. Even though I know it's a tremendous markup. It's a crazy fucking markup. And I can get the fucking shit online. I'm doing myself a disservice right here, right now. But what I'm doing really is setting up some good karma for myself later on. And he's setting up some bad karma for himself. But I don't think he understand that. I'm going to just text the dude back and say, look. I don't want the license plate. You know what I mean? Uh, you you uh, you could give me my deposit back, or you could, you know, you can. I eat the twenty bucks, but I don't want the license plate. If you're gonna be doing business like this, that's uh, I'm gonna check that. That's what one part of me is saying, but the other part of me is saying this: I, I'm gonna hold this nigga feet to the fire, right? I'm going to make him deliver on the license plate. Even if he had to burn up $20 worth of gas trying to get it to me. Now he's supposed to call me tomorrow. <laughs> he's supposed to call me tomorrow, right? And tell me when the fucking thing is finished. I bet you, I bet you I don't hear from this motherfucker, if I hear from him at all, to at least Wednesday. This shit happened the other night. At my art show, this fucking guy was going to try to commission me to do all this work. And he was going to call me the next day and all of this. He wanted this whole family done, blah, 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 blah. This motherfucker was going on and on and on. A black dude calls himself a businessman. I give him the fucking card. He's, I'm going to call. I'm going to do that. I ain't heard from the motherfucker. So, in order to keep my fucking self on the right side of karma, I don't, I don't take these motherfuckers on. I don't let them ruin my day by getting mad and refusing to do business with black people. I just put them in part of the 50 to 60% of black people that you can't fuck with. You know what I'm betting? That's the same in any, in, in any population of people, but I'm talking about black people right now. And that is one of the biggest problems we have in, in the ADOS community and in the diaspora, that we don't have enough respect for each other when it comes to business, especially in this country. Now, when I was in Trinidad, I see black people doing business, and it's, and it's 
It is what it say it is. Because when I went to Trinidad, I rented a car from a black person. I rented a house from a black person. I bought from black people. And I was always treated fairly and with respect when I was in Trinidad. But I'm here now, back home. And this is the kind of shit I got to deal with a lot of times. Not all the times, but enough to where I got to speak on it. Bad business. Don't 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 get caught up in that shit if you're trying to run yourself a little business and trying to earn a little something on the side. Don't run your hustle like that. The other night I told people, you know, I I told people how I how I uh, what my a little bit about my business model when um when I'm selling portraits, you know, a little bit how I hold down the price, you know. And um, that's because I'm honest. I mean, when they look at me, my stuff, they know that, you know, um, that I put a lot of work into the creation of it, right? But I hold down the price of the, of the frames that I use. You know what I mean? And, um, and I recondition the frames. Keeps the price down. But if I was to get some, go to go to Amazon or Michaels or some website and order custom frames for them 16 by 20 and 30 by uh, 38 portraits and shit, I have to bump my prices up to three and $400 because that's how long I take to actually, actually produce the piece. And then you got to package the thing and then you got to make a profit and pay yourself. So you're talking three and $400. And, and my target market... They don't have that. They want a picture of their son or their daughter or their grandbaby. They want it to hang up on their wall and have it look nice. And because of the income level that we all living at, that's where I have to price my shit at. And when I say I'm going to give somebody a, a piece that they can hang on their wall and be proud of, that's what I give them. And I give it to them when I say I'm going to give it to them or earlier. That's how I that's how I funk. And I expect to be dealt with in that manner when I'm going to black people to do business. That's the that's the shit we gotta start doing next. We got the unity part, that's coming together good. ADOS is strong. And it's gonna get stronger. American descendants of slavery, we know who we are, right? And we letting the world know that we know who we are. But we got to be all the way about that. We got to start doing business the right way with honor and pride in workmanship. You know what I mean? Pride in workmanship. If you run around giving people your business card, be able to stand by what the fuck it is you do. That's how I get down. You know, I demonstrate. But anyway, I ain't going to let that shit ruin my day. Just watch it, though, when you're out there buying, when you're out there selling, when you're out there doing your thing. You do yourself a great benefit in the long run by being honest and square dealing, especially, especially when you're dealing with black people because ain't nobody else going to treat us fairly. So we got to make sure we do it ourselves. That's it for now. I'm going to catch you all in the next one, TC, and I'm out.